Welcome back, and today we're going to make Bubble Bobble. So, if you don't know what Bubble Bobble is, I'm going to put a clip on in a second, which will, should appear now. So, Bubble Bobble is a really old game. I actually remember the first time I played it was on my dad's Atari. Um, I've still got it, but I did break it. Um, but it's the Atari, I think it's a 750 ST, I think I've got. Um, it's a pretty good game, um, quite simple in terms of mechanics, but it's actually quite difficult to replicate. So we're going to go at that. Um, mainly sort of your standard platform in terms of movement and things like that. But um, there are some slight, sort of slight differences in my animations and some quite good um, mechanics that we play with. So in case you haven't played ball before, it's a game by Taito. Um, and you basically play as a little dinosaur, I think it's supposed to be a dinosaur, where you can fire bubbles out your mouth and you've got to kill so many enemies in a certain amount of time. So you have a little area there, some little dudes that literally just run to the floor. And you see the tens of fruit, which one thing we haven't done. And they chase you around and you've got to get points. And that's pretty much the game. But I just remember playing this a lot when I was younger with my dad. And really enjoyed it. I thought it was really fun. Um, I really like the music, so I thought it'd be a nice go just to have a little not so faithful recreation of the game itself. The game is uh, afterwards as well. It sort of evolved into, um, I think it evolved into was it puzzle level? I think it was called where you, you use the um, dinosaurs fire a balloon just to get the colours together. A little bit like Beehive Bedlam on the Skybox if you're old enough to know all eyes. Um, so yeah, so I think without watching too much of a video, let's get into it. So, standard procedure. We're going to make a P5 template. We're going to call it Bubble Bubble, because that's the name of the game. We're going to go over to the P5 Play website. We're going to go to the home screen. We're going to get the JS Deliver link. Now, a few people have asked me, well, what if I don't want to use Replit? And that's absolutely fine. You can go onto the Replit site and you can click on them to use it offline. And you can go ahead and download it. And you don't even need to use Replit anyway. You can use Visual Studio Code. What's good about these JS Deliver um, links is that it just means that it just downloads it every time. It just goes and finds it online and uses a library rather than you um, having to worry about daft stuff like... Um, downloading libraries and things, but you can still download it manually if you want. It's entirely up to you. So I've got some images that, if we just go find them, that we're going to want to use, which is the sprite sheet for my enemy, our guy, bubble, and then I've even got the music. Okay. Um, clearly I had two copies of this one, so I'm just going to get rid of the one on there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my global variables. So I'm going to need some walls. I'm going to need some platforms to stand on. I'm going to need somebody to a uh, variable to be the player. Then I have a variable for direction. For so how it works, as we saw in the video, we fire bubbles out. We need to know what direction we're facing, or the last direction we was facing. Otherwise. Um, it's always going to sort of hit yourself as bubble. It's always going to have a score. We need a group for the enemies, so I'm going to call that enemies. And then I'm going to need the stupid keyboard. Um, I'm going to need a bunch of variables to some images. So I've got player, image, enemy, image, bubble, image, and then I don't know if I necessarily need this last one. Um, then let's call it um, music as well. Let's spell it right like that. Then I'll load them in now to save a bit of time. So function preload. It's always good to load them first. So I've got player image, player image, enemy image. And I've got bubble image. I really need to disable this um, mouse on my keyboard. Um, bubble image and then um, 
music. I'm going to load sound, which is song.mp3. And then load image. So bubble image is bubble.png. Bubble.png. And what I can do is just copy that. Put dot paste over with a JS deliver because that's not great. So then I've got bubble bubble for this one. And then I've got enemy sheet. Now if you want to see what these look like, I've got bubble, which is just a ball, a sprite sheet from running around, and I've got my two sort of alive sprites, and then when you chop them in a bubble, they go in a bubble like that. Let me get rid of the blue background, maybe something to do in the future. So I've got our stuff nice and loaded in. Now I'm just going to make a small canvas. So 400 by 400. Possibly make it bigger, it's up to you. Then I'm going to add some gravity in. So weld.gravity.y. I'm not going to have loads of gravity because I want to try and replicate how the game looks. And then what I want to do is create some walls. So I'm just going to comment there. So I create the walls. So I want walls for the top, the sides, the bottom. With a little gap so you can fall through the sky, uh, fall through the floor, sorry, because you might notice in the game you fall through the floor and you come back from the top, so it's a way of getting around quicker. So I'm going to make a new group, so walls equals a new group, like that. So scroll down so we can um, have some room. We'll do walls dot collider equals static, we don't want to move, and then we'll just give them a colour for now so we know where they're drawing. Dot color equals orange. Obviously, we can texture these if we need to as well. Um, now, what we're going to do now is essentially, instead of having to constantly make new walls, what we're going to do is going to make a function called create walls. Now, what this function is going to do, not massively a little code or anything crazy or special, but we're going to do create wall. We're going to take an x, a y, a width. And a height as parameters, and then all we're going to do is just uh, make a new walls dot sprite at x y width and height. Now I could obviously just write this line every time I want to make a wall, but if you're going to make a new level that's got loads of um, things in, you should have a little function just a little bit better. Um, I'm going to want another one as well to create. Um, the platforms we stand on as well. So it might be that you want uh, two sets of walls or whatever you want. So we're going to do the same thing again, but create. As I said, this isn't necessary at all. It's just <clears throat> good practice to have things in functions anyway. So it's a good thing for us to do. So x, y, width, and height. I'm going to make a new platforms dot sprite. Now what you can do as well is have it so you declare the this new. You could declare it as a variable in there if you want to do any changes to it, like make one dynamic, make one that's like an invisible floor or something. You could do that as well. Um, so x, y, width, and height. It just makes it a little bit less confusing later on. So now I've got that, what we can do is we can go ahead and create a bunch of walls. Now, I've already got this pre-done, so I'm going to steal this. Just like that. So you see this makes my left, right, bottom, and um, my two bottom ones on the top, so if I run that, I should have a nice little area so I can't basically run off the edge of the map. <laughs> We've got a little hole to fall in. Maybe it's a little bit, should be in the centre, but I don't think it's a big deal. Um, so after that, we need to create the platforms now. We can use that create platform function once I've got this done. So platforms equals a new group. Now the reason we do it as a group is that when we come to... Um, do things like jumping and stuff. We only want to jump if we're colliding with the um, with the platforms. Now, if we do this, we can just say if we're touching the group, rather than if we're um, you know, if we've got x and y's and colliding with things, and which makes it a lot easier. And then again, I've already got. So I will pause a little bit after this bit for you to get into yours. And we've got our platforms there. So if I run this now. Because I've got this function, I can create as many platforms as I want. So I've got a nice little uh, area there for me to go ahead and do my bits with. So you might want to pause just to catch up a little bit. 
but I am going to move on. So I will crack on. So now we need an object for our bubbles. So bubbles equals a new group again. We're going to spawn in multiple bubbles. It's the same reason we can just see if we're colliding with the whole object rather than the whole group, sorry. Um, rather than individual bubble sprites. And we've got some of the array and statue and major and stuff, which isn't great. Then bubbles dot collider equals a nice K because we don't want you to be able to knock a bubble out of the way. Bubbles dot image equals our bubble image. Um, and that's our bubble sorted, so we can put bubbles object. Let's comment in our code is a good thing. You should be doing that while you program. I know sometimes I don't, but you should be. And then let's do our sprite for the player. So we've got player equals a new sprite. 100, 300. So it's going to be near the bottom of the screen. Um, now, you see I put 20.05, that's down to how we can load in animations and sprite sheets. So we're about too much, you can just play around with it later and just trust that that works for now. Then player dot rotation, oh, not totation, or toation, rotation lock equals true. Then player dot sprite sheet equals the player image. And then what I'm going to do is add in a frame delay. So player dot frame delay equals eight. So it's like a eight frame, so it's not super quick. Um, and then we're going to add some animations. So player dot add annies. So we're going to add some animations um, like that. And then we're going to have just run for now because that's all we need. So run. And then it's row zero, because it's the first row we've got. And I've got seven images, so I'll do frames seven like that. And that should be that sorted. And um, we can check it works. There we go. Obviously, we've not cleared yet, so we can just put that in there. And then we should see our nice little guy spawns in, falls to the floor, and that's just Let's make the background black just so we can. That's what the game's like anyway, but we can just see a little bit better there. There we go, we've got a little guy there just moving around. Um, you could have it so it doesn't say so you've got standing, which is you know just one frame, I suppose we could do. Um, but I'm not worrying about it for now. That's something you can change if you don't like that. So we're gonna make it our pretty much final group, which is gonna be enemies. So Enemies equals a new group. Enemies. And um, is spell it right. Now, what I'm doing here is something that in my tower defense game I didn't do. Now, what you can do in P5 Play is something that I actually reached out to the developer and I chat about. You can actually just add your own things like health and things to a sprite without any issues. So I've got enemies dot captured. So if I've been capturing the bubble. Um, I want to do something later on, so I did that in there. Enemies dot collider equals dynamics. We're going to be running around and walking on platforms and stuff. Enemies dot rotation lock equals uh, true. Sorry, not false. Enemies dot direction just so they don't. Because otherwise, if you don't do this part, I found that they just start floating up, which because I don't have the direction starts at minus ninety, which is up. So we start moving. It's not great. Then enemies dot sprite sheet equals enemy image. Um, and then let's just got some widths in there. Enemies dot w equals this just seems to work with 19 and 20, but we can probably change that later on. Dot height equals 20. This stupid mouse. I mean, I really need to sort it out, don't I? It's absolutely rubbish. Um then we're gonna add some animations, so enemies dot add annies. And then we're gonna have when they're moving, row zero frames three.
Um, why have I put that onto the page? I really need to look at disabling this, but I don't see where you disable it on this uh, keyboard. I don't think there actually is a a good way of doing it. So let's just take that out and put it where it's supposed to be. Frames three. Let's get rid of all this rubbish. So row zero frames three, comma, and then we want. Call it pop, it's probably a bad name actually, but it should be in the, in the bubble, but I can change that later on. So frames three as well. That should be everything. Let's just check there's nothing weird. Um let me say thing off when the mouse went weird. And then anyways dot scale equals 0.9. And that's pretty much our enemy object, so our enemy group, so Our enemy group, and then what we need now is some a couple of functions for, for touching. So we'll do enemies dot overlaps, and then if they overlap the bubbles object, we're going to call a function called captured. If it's spelled correctly, and then we need to spawn some enemies at the start of the game. So for let i equals zero we could have like a variable instead of um this next part so i is less than three but that could be a variable so you can dynamically spawn more enemies if you need to and then we're just going to do a new enemies dot sprite and then we're just going to do it in the middle um plus i times 50 that's literally just so uh, it's the are all on top of each other so it starts looking stupid and then around here it's going to spawn and then, yeah, I think it might crash because we haven't got captured yet. So I might just make function captured really quickly. So function captured. Doesn't do anything yet, but we'll get to that in a minute. So there we go. I've got three enemies that spawn. They're all animated. Um, maybe I can add a frame delay on that as well, maybe, but I don't know. And then one last thing I need to do is if I collide with the enemies, so player dot collides the enemies group I'm gonna call a function called pop the bubble okay so function pop bubble okay so that's the sort of the main game setup and we're sort of ready to start now so we're gonna look into our clear function our draw function first so we're gonna get the score displaying so we're gonna fill two five five so it's white um text size 30 i'll do for now because i had a better font in as well um i'm gonna have text which is going to be the score at 50 50 so let's see if that works so we should have something in this corner we should see so we've got fill text size score does score have anything in it no it doesn't so it's not going to show anything There we go. So we've got our score in the corner. Obviously, we can change how those things look later on. Um, now, we do need to get some functionality. And so let's start off with a nice easy one. So if if I press space, so if KB dot presses space, so it's only if you press it once, so you can't hold it and go crazy. I'm going to call a function called shoot bubble, which we need to make. So one thing I do as well when I'm is if I know I need a function, I'll just make the function but not do anything with it just yet. And I'll I'll change it later on. And I'll say if kb dot pressing a um I'm gonna do do I want it to be move left or not? Now I've been having a bit of a debate with my students about um moving because if you just change a player's X position it's not it seems to not work with it sometimes it goes through sprites and goes through holes and tiles and stuff. Um so you're better off with using velocity or using move. Um now the reason why I'm not using move today is because I found if you jump and use move, you can just sort of float in the air and move left and right as you're still in the air. Whereas if it's your velocity you can sort of move a little bit um in the air, but it's more like Mario rather than you floating, which is a bit a bit weird. I'll look at that later on if you want to add. So it doesn't so player dot and I want to do player dot mirror 
dot x equals true. And then I just want exactly the same code pretty much for d, so a and d. And then I want my velocity to be 1, I want my direction to be 0, and I want to not <coughs> mirror the sprite. So hopefully nothing breaks. Ooh, unexpected token, that's a neat one. And that's because I've missed off a little comma, or apostrophe, I suppose it is not that. So then I can move. And then space doesn't do anything at the moment because shoot bubble doesn't do anything. Um, and the last thing I want is me to jump. So I'm going to use W to jump. So I'm going to copy this code. I'm going to not miss out a little um, apostrophe and break the game. But I'm also going to say if I'm pressing W and player dot colliding platforms okay um i probably could extend that a little bit more i think maybe so i'm going to do vel x minus one and i'm not going to worry about any of this stuff that's up there and then one final thing i need to do is so i can fall down this hole is just have a little if statement so if player dot y is greater than 400 I'm just going to teleport, so player.x equals width divided by 2, just so I move away, and then player.y equals 20. Um, <clears throat> so let's see if that works. So I should be able to run and jump. So can I jump? Not just yet. So, aha, I've missed something off. So if I jump into there, I appear at the top, which is what I'm supposed to do. What I need to do now is also, because I've got this bottom thing that's not a platform, I'm going to have to add in an OR. It's going to be exactly the same. Because I'm touching walls as well, because this counts as a wall, not a platform. So I should now be able to jump. There we go. Now maybe I should probably change that to minus 5 or something, so I jump a bit higher. That's pretty much it. So that's how player pretty much. There we go. 90% there. Maybe that's a bit high. Okay. Um, and then I know that at the end of it, I'm going to have to do some move my enemies. So I'll make a function called move enemies like that. And I'll make it like here. So function move enemies. But again, I'm going to leave it empty because I'm not doing anything yet. So now we're going to shoot our bubbles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a local variable, I'm going to call it b, just a bubble, and I'm going to say if direction is zero, so if I'm facing to the right, that's what zero is, so we've got zero, 90, 180, and up is minus 90. Um, I'm going to say we're going to make some new bubble, so new bubbles dot sprite, player dot x plus 50, so I'm going to spawn on you, and then player dot y. Um, else if direction equals equals 180. It's going to be exactly the same code, except for I want to have it so it spawns behind me. So I'm going to do take away 50. So I'll make a new one. And then regardless what happens, b dot direction equals my player's direction, which I set earlier on. And then b dot speed equals one so it'll just fire out with the same speed all the time so now i should make some bubbles just like that okay so that's shoot bubble pretty much finished so now we want to um move the enemies i guess now my enemies moving function is pretty big pretty long so i think for now what we might do is i'm going to say that's the last because that's probably the most um The most difficult. Okay, so you might notice here I've made the idea of this function captured. So we're going to focus on that one for now. Function captured. So this one's nice and easy. So what we can do is we can pass in, there's a P5 feature, 
it passes in the two objects that are, that are interacting. So we can do e dot removes. So that'll delete the enemy. Um, sorry, it'll that'll delete the bubble actually. Um, so I suppose it should be e and b, and we'll remove b because I don't want the bubbles to keep around. And then we'll do e dot e dot any equals pop. So we change the bubble animation. And then we'll do e dot captured equals true. E dot collider, I'll explain this in a minute, equals k. And then e dot vel dot y equals minus 0 0.1, just so it floats. Um, so that's that one. So just to sort of prove a bit of a point, what should happen is if I can make my way up there. I'm not good at my own game, which is going to go great. You see, they're now in a bubble, they're floating up, and the idea is that I should, if I can actually hit them, which if I do this, I should be able to. I should be able to pop them next. That's the next thing to do, is to be able to pop them once they're in bubbles. Okay? Um, so, yeah, so we're pretty much... Um, 90% there. Um, we've got a few different little bits to do. Um, so we need a function to pop the balls. So we'll do that next, but that's easy. We've already got it here. So we'll, we're going to pass in the player and the enemy. And we just want a little check there. So if e.captured equals equals true, so if they're in a bubble, then what we're going to do is just get rid of it. So e.remove score plus equals. 100. So now let's try again. Appreciate this. The videos have got a lot longer since the games have got more complicated. And it helps if I can actually play my own game. Oh, this is embarrassing. I don't know why I keep doing this. Why don't I just jump from the top? Like you can in the real game. So I can just pop them. And you see there, I've just popped the balloons or bubbles. I've got 300 points. I've won the level or whatever. What happens in the real game as well is these bubbles turn into fruit and you get extra points if you collect all the fruit in the time limit. I'm not going to put that in there because you've got the mechanics you need. So this is 90% of the game done. Our final thing to do is to move the enemies and this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So <clears throat> first things first, I want to loop through all of my enemy group. I'm going to set all of their speed. So e dot speed equals not 0.5. So they'll start moving straight away. Um, and then basically want a big chair. So you see at the minute, because the direction isn't set, they just float back up. So that's what I was talking about, this idea of this uh, this um, direction thing. And obviously they're hitting there because they're dynamic and then just reversing them like a ball bouncing. So we need to fix that. So if e dot captured equals false, because we only care about moving them when they're not in bubbles, like that, and then exactly the same sort of idea with the, with the player. So if e dot colliding with the platforms, or e dot colliding with the walls, so running around. Now we want to put some brackets in here because it's like a boolean operation. So we're going to say <coughs> this, and <coughs> if the distance between the enemy and the player is less than 200 pixels, then we're going to do something a little bit more. So, so basically, so if you get closer, they'll start chasing you, rather than a little bit like Pac-Man, rather than them just moving randomly. Which, to be fair, for most of the real game, it seems a bit random. But try to make it a little bit more difficult to play. So um, I now need to think about actually putting the mouse in the right place. So less than equal to player dot x plus ten. I've got a little bit of an offset just because I found it was glitching a little bit when I made it. So if um, I am essentially to the right or the left, I'm going to move right or left essentially. Um, so 
e dot direction equals zero. So if they're essentially to my player's right, they'll go right. If they go left, go left. I think pretty much is what I've gone for. So e dot mirror dot dot x equals false like that, and then the exact opposite. Oh, that's a, that's a shame. You can press Control S and replicate, and it it needs up your brackets, save me deleting. But as you said, as you might have seen in the bottom corner, it said it failed, so that was always good. So if e dot x is greater than or equal to player dot x take away ten, um, then e dot direction equals one hundred eighty, so it's going to go left, and then e dot mirror dot x equals root. So that should, hopefully, not have an error. I'm sure there is one. Don't like a token I've got there. It's not liking probably this bracket here because I missed one up there. So what should happen is if you see I'm got closer, so they're trying to follow me. Because I've got them as a collide like that, you see they're sort of coming towards me and then and fall through, which obviously means making spawn from the top again. Like that. So that part's pretty much done. Okay. Is it going to let me format it? It's really not liking formatting like that. So um, we still want to stay in this loop. We still want to use E. Um, then what we're going to do next is essentially, well, that's sort of it. I don't know whether I need to go any further with that. Um, I'm going to leave it for now and see how well the game plays. Um, so, because I've got some extra code that I put in, um, to help them walk and move towards you a bit better, but I think I'm just moving left or right is enough, really. You see, it's still 100% because they can still just bounce on my head, which isn't great. Um, so we'll do the next thing. So if E dot overlaps the walls and e dot y is less than 50 so basically it's up here and it's a bubble um is it, any time it's going to do that is it, it's a bubble um e dot captured equals false so basically it'll pop itself um and then if e dot y is greater than 400 just like the player we're gonna e dot x equals width divided by two E dot y equals 20. So what should happen now is the game crashes. So it's not liking something there, um, which would be something daft. So it's not that. I think I need to get out of this. I've got a bracket somewhere. That I've put in the wrong place, and I've got like a floating bracket. Um, so I think I need to have that there, and then I get rid of one. So I've got an extra one. Mm, it's not liking something. So if oh, uh, pretty easy that one. Um, I just had an extra bracket in there for no reason. So I think it was crashing on that. There we go. So, play is normal. I'm going to let him come and get me. Now, I should have them chasing towards me. So, I've clearly got some sort of mistake in there. That's a fun little feature. Because that's not particularly wet, so that's got great. Um, so, why is he going through the floor? Might be something daft, I'm sure. Um, so if it's greater than 400, let's just change 410. Let's just see if it can fall through. It's possibly that his collider is still going to be a. Come on, come and chase me. Oh, that's good. There we go. Come on, follow me. So it's falling through there, so it seems to me that there is a little bit of a, a mistake in the collider, possibly. 
Um, so we'll look at that in a minute. We'll crack on as normal. Um, so yeah, so my other part of colour, which I'm not sure we necessarily need, um, is to make sure that they move and don't bounce off the... Um, or don't bounce off your heads on one thing. But because everything else seems to be working, I can kill people. That's looking good. But they do seem to... Be able to fall through the floor, which isn't good at the minute. But then, anyway, this should be triggering this in there anyway. So, should this be a, an else if possibly with this one? So, if I'm climbing with the platforms, because capture to be true in that case, and then this should be regardless happening. So, uh, I'm not too sure at this point. Um, why is falling through? So, a bit of debugging, which is good. Um, so, let's just have a little look and do... Can I console.log the collider? It'd be interesting if you can. I'm not trying to do it before. So, it's saying dynamic. Which is all good. But then they're going through that. So it's not the collider that's an issue. Um, but I'm saying climb platforms. Oh, I'm colliding with the walls. So that should be working fine. Is what's going to make the video an extra bloody half an hour long, isn't it? Um, so let's have a little look. Yeah, I'm not too sure what it's doing that. So let's have it as an else if. So we're not worrying about that. I wonder if that else if just fixes it. So let's move up the way. If not, we can always stick in some extra movement code to make it move a little bit better. If that fixes it, I'll be really happy. Because it's something really stupid. It did fix it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so that's most of the game done. I think the only thing you need to do really is have it as well is adding a sort of lives property. Um, I suppose with a bit of extra space in on these bad guys as well would be a good idea. Um, there's a few things that I've been toying with to uh, try and make it a little bit better, which is to try and um, it's like it's difficult because what you want is the um the guys the um bubbles the ones are captured not the bubbles sorry the bubbles need to be care um when they get captured where well, I got the captured code the collider I feel like should be none really should be none oh, brilliant like that but then what what I found is that if you do it as non, so we'll let them jump down. So they can come for me. Oh. And then when I do that, you've got this issue here where you can overlap with them. So that's why it needs to be a K collider. Um, but if anyone's got a better idea, a better way of thinking, um, let me know. Um, and obviously at the minute, we've got this idea that they can jump up again if um, they touch the guy, touch the player. So we have got player size pop bubble. So I think in this pop bubble function as well, else you want something like, um, let's just put p dot x equals width divided by two, p dot y equals 20. So if you get hit by a by a guy, you know, we take a life off and respawn you at the top. Um just like that. So um last little changes to do, you possibly put lives in there, that's quite an easy one to do, because we can just go 
let lives equals equals three. We pop the bubble. We can say lives minus equals three. Oop, minus equals one. Um, go into our draw, wherever it is, and we could do and bang our lives in there. So we should see lives of that. And then, but you see, we've still got this issue of them floating around. They do fix themselves, because as soon as they hit the, the floor again, they carry on. Um, so I think it's a little bug that I think I might have to do a, a redo of the video to put in. But majority of the game's done. So I think we're going to leave it there, whilst we can. Um, and yeah, so one last thing I think we'll do, I'll just let it glitch out whilst it's there, actually in there, is in the setup, last thing should we have, just to make it um, music dot. Let's see if that works, because I haven't tested the sound yet. Hey, it's all looking good. I like it. Um, so yeah, so we can compare it to the final game and see what you think. I'm sure some little changes you, you want to do yourselves. Um, but if you thought it was a bit different, you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. Um, I'm pretty sure I've got an embarrassing metric of something like 2% of people watching my videos subscribe. So uh, if you wouldn't mind doing me a favour and doing that, that'd be great. Um, but if not, I will see you in the next video.